It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Shelly Od Moyal, and I'm the co-founder of iAngels, which is an online VC. Here with me today, we brought David Maman, one of uh, our entrepreneurs. David Maman is a serial entrepreneur. Uh, this is his 13th startup. David has been coding since the age of 13, has gotten his first degree in mathematics and computer science at the age of 15, master's degree at the age of 18, computer science and mathematics, recently sold his company to Huawei, and today we're here to talk about Bina. So before we talk about Bina, maybe uh, we've been hearing a lot about AI today, so maybe David, you can tell us just a couple of words about what, what is AI? So artificial intelligence, which many times is being called as machine intelligence, eventually comes to replicate and duplicate what people are actually, uh, what, what people might do in computers. And the thing is that those kind of technologies of AI is mostly used for three most common use cases, such as predicting in order to predict a specific action or behavior, uh, the option to classify, which means to group things together, and many times also as an anomaly mechanism in order to better find anomalies when they're happening. Okay, so what does, a, what does Bina do within kind of the broader AI context? So we realize something which is, I think, the core of everything, that AI by itself is not an added value for companies, but actually the AI applications that solves real-world problem and helps company to get a better uh, added value, to get ROI from AI, those are the core things. And what we are providing, we are providing an out-of-the-box, ready-to-use use cases that customers can actually almost plug and play and get the added value that they need, and everything is about ROI. Okay, so maybe, maybe let's have a seat and so we can... <laughs> better <of> discuss. <laughs> better discuss. So, David, most of your startups were in the cybersecurity space. Yes. Why this? Why now? So uh, eight of the startups that I founded, and this is my lucky number 13th, were in cybersecurity. And I think that in each and every one throughout my career, statistical modeling was the core instruments that helped me to get the added value of the specific proposition that we needed to create. So this kind of statistical modeling and the back end of everything we created uh, with my uh, two co-founders, uh, Michael and Costa, both of them uh, PhDs in mathematics and physics, we were able to bring this vision that everything is based on ROI. And what exactly is your solution? So today we're, uh, I guess we're offering uh, an extremely accurate AI application that provides customers the added value that they need. Maybe give us an example. Yeah, so let's take the insurance industry, for example. In the insurance industry, everything is about assessing uh, the, the actually, to assess the, the, I guess we can call it risk. the risk. Yes, sorry, I uh, lost the word in translation. So everything is about assessing the risk. And those huge insurance companies are based on the last documented visit to the doctor in order to assess the risk for a specific person. What were his vital signs? What is heart rate reads? And so on. So in this industry, for example, we have developed a small mobile app that runs on any mobile phone and is, can, in real time, estimate the heart rate variability as well as stress level to anyone who uses this app or uses this phone. And for example, for Sompo, the largest insurance company in Japan, we're today providing this application SDK, which is part of their application, that is ongoing measuring your heart rate variability, measuring stress level, and assist those companies, those insurance companies, to have an ongoing assessment of your health. So I have a question. Today, with all the AI tools that are available in open source, like TensorFlow on Google, can't any data scientist come up with these applications? So yes, great data scientists can do almost anything. They can actually use those open source things and have to focus about how they reach a specific problem be solved. But everything is about accuracy. Accuracy have a direct transformation to ROI. And without companies able to achieve those level of accuracies that delivering ROI or showing them how they can make money or save money, it doesn't worth anything. And what we've been able to prove, that some of the largest organization in the world already is using our AI applications. Is the accuracy 
the difference between kind of 90% and 60% or 60% and 70%? So for example, for one of the largest banks in the world, we do today ethics predictions. Uh, before that, the accuracy was about 72%. We provide 99.994% accuracy. Wow. So we're talking about huge differentiators when we're talking about ROI and how much money can actually be made for those companies. Wow. 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 What's your secret sauce? So the secret sauce eventually in each and every AI application that Bina wraps is how we combine the power of signal processing with AI. And when we're talking about signal processing, sig signal processing in a very high level, it's a subfield in mathematics that provides you the option to analyze the behavior of a specific phenomenon inside of when something happens. For example, let's take uh, a, a very simple example to understand. Uh, if we'll uh, try to analyze multiple sources of data, and, those, and I have eight different sources of data that are coming together, how can I get the signal that statistically represents all of them in financials or any other source? So signal processing help us to do the entire pre-processing in a completely different way and combine with AI, we're achieving an unparalleled accuracy in almost each and every uh, AI application we create. So you're able to understand the data better before it goes into the AI. Yes, this is one of the core things. We're making sure that we understand the data much, much better are able to actually break it down to pieces that provides much more insight before we model it using AI. I see. Who are your customers? So today we're already working with five out of the top 20 banks in the world. We're working with two out of the largest T1 automotive vendors in the world. We're working with a few of the largest insurance companies in the world. And the list now really goes but I have a question. Why, you know, why do these global banks need you? I mean, don't they have like thousands of data scientists each? Yeah, so if we'll take, for example, you know, those are public numbers, but in JP Morgan, for example, they have over a thousand data scientists. And a thousand data scientists, that's like an army in data science, by the way. And those data scientists are all endlessly working about problems they need to solve. But everything eventually is about accuracy. And this combination of signal processing and AI helps us to deliver an unparalleled accuracy that they have never seen before. And that's what it's all about, delivering accuracy that is transformed into ROI. So I wanted to go a little bit on a tangent and ask you about this very passionate debate going on between leaders in the world like Elon Musk, like Stephen Hawking, um, some of which are very worried about AI's implication on the world. And so there's a utopian camp and a dystopian camp. Where are you? I'm completely utopian. So during the next 20 to 40 years, AI is going to change almost each and every part of our lives. The way that we uh, consume parts, the way that we work, the way that we deliver, the way that we see things, everything is going to change. And I think that only for the better, undoubtedly. I think that even work by itself is going to be completely changed. I think that our added value is going to be uh, completely recreated. Because think about it, the first people that will lose their job with an AI generation is actually the smarter people. You see endless amount of application in healthcare. You see endless application in taxing, in law. Those are the first people that are going to lose their jobs, not the people that sell things in the store. And this kind of transformation will change the way that we react to anything in this world. So how can we be in a utopia if all of us are out of a job. I think, to be honest, that's what I think, but the job and work itself will need to be reconsidered. Because think about that, why we work. We work in order to provide to our families. What if this kind of uh, creation that we create today will be created automatically? Why should work will be part of the entire lifespan of ours if everything can be done automatically? So that's a question you know that it's too early to answer, but I think in about a decade, uh, things are going to start changing. And I think that work as a principle will have to change as well. Very interesting. So it took about 60 years to kind of reach this major breakthrough of deep learning, and a lot of people are using deep learning applications. And it seems that we're a couple of breakthroughs away from autonomous AI. Yeah. Do you think Bina can contribute to one of these breakthroughs. So I think in a few different vectors, we're already doing that. 
uh, we've been able to prove how, without the need to wait another decade to have an AI completely optimized, this combination of signal processing and AI help us get to where customers need today. Where is B9 three years from now? So we are building now the largest AI store place, not marketplace, a store place, where we already have almost a dozen use cases customers can just use out of the box. And in, in our website, which you can check, you can see the different use cases that everything is based on ROI and transformation to real money for companies. Uh, we are now a very small team. We're just 25 people. More than half of the companies are PhDs. So we are working about amazing and thrilling things. Uh, we started sales just about two and a half quarters away, and we're already in a few million dollars ARR. We are planning to finish 2020 in $40 million ARR. That's the plan, and we're already starting to see that it's actually happening. Thank you very much, David. Thank you very much, Ellie.